G'day guys, if you've clicked on this video then you're looking for some Easter crafts and I've got five to share with you. The first three I did with my daughter when she just turned two, just so you kind of know the rough age that I started doing these with her and the last two I did just as she's turned three. So the first one I want to share with you is plastic egg rolling. So I use those plastic eggs, which I've done a video on just recently where I shared heaps of ideas that we've done with them. I really like these eggs. I think they are so versatile. So using those, what we did is we used an underbed storage container. I just purchased this from Bunnings. It was really inexpensive. And then I put some non-toxic paint in it as well as some butcher's paper on the bottom. The butcher's paper I got from Ikea. So I'll link that down below for you. I do try and link where I get things from if I can. So do have a look in the description box. The paint I'm using is Montmartre paint, which is non-toxic tempura paint. So what I do first with any activity that I'm doing my daughter and she's never done it before, then I model how to do it. Um, so here I am just tipping the tub, demonstrating what we're going to do. And then I kind of verbalize what I'm thinking, I suppose. If I tip this up, the balls roll down the other end. If I tip it up the other way, they come back again. So just verbalizing what I'm actually doing. I find that really helpful. When I'm doing this activity, there's some language that I like to repeat as in kind of vocab words for her to learn. And especially in those early days when she's just learning words, repetition is really helpful, especially in context. So some of the words were egg, ball, stuck, because one of the balls got stuck. So I said, oh, it's stuck, the ball's stuck. Um, and shaking, we shuck we shook <laughs> shaking we shook the underbed storage container so that the eggs would move up and down this particular paper i used for homemade wrapping paper so it's really unique personalized gift um, easy to use and if you think about it it's really inexpensive for presents um, for grandparents but also for their friends it's really nice you know if you go to a second or third birthday you just done your own wrapping paper I actually got this idea because one of my friends with her son in kinder for Christmas actually gave me his kinder paper and it had his name on it. Um, and I was like, ah, oh, okay. So I thought that was a great way to reuse their artwork because if your child's anything like mine, we have heaps of it. <laughs> a couple of things I'd change next time. So instead of doing swirls, I'd do blobs. That way it'd be easier for the eggs to pick up the paint and move up and down. I feel with my activities, it's really important that it's the whole process. So sometimes she'll help in the setup of it or she'll be there um, and then we'll do the activity and then cleaning up together is really important. So this is fun to clean up because we just use the garden hose and sprayed the eggs out onto the lawn. The next activity I wanna share with you is egg stamping. Like I said, we did this when she just turned two and this year I've got great ideas. Like I really think we could do rainbows with it. Um, we could do flowers with the petals around it. So they're just a couple of ideas, but extend on what your child's interest is. You know, if they're into cars, then they could do um, the eggs as the wheels. I found if I follow my daughter's interest, then she's gonna spend longer doing the activity and get more enjoyment from it because it's more meaningful to her. Like with the first activity I was talking about, the cleanup, and I like to, when I'm doing an activity, think about that at the start. So here, what I've done is I've covered the table with butcher's paper and then put some tape underneath just to decrease the amount of mess that I've got to clean up. On this occasion, we actually use this as a birthday card for her gran. This activity for my daughter also reinforced colors and color recognition because as she was stamping them, she would say the colors. Do you want to use a different color? Do you want to try green? Thank you. you like using the purple one? Something I actually learned from this activity is with the plastic egg, I'll just go get a plastic egg. Okay, I'm back. So I grabbed the plastic eggs. I've got them downstairs because we've been using them in activities. Um, so with the egg, when you first get it, oh, I've pulled them off, but it's attached. You can kind of see there, it's only really attached. So what I found with my daughter is this is actually sturdier. So it's a lot firmer, whereas this is harder to grip onto. So when I first did it, I actually didn't realize, but I'd given her two of say the top of the egg and one at the bottom. And when she went to grab it, she kept slipping off. But with this one, she was able to hold it and stamp with it. 
So that's a way to make it harder or easier depending on where your child's at. This is an easier option because it's easier to grip onto and then stamp. Whereas this one I found wasn't as easy and my daughter just slipped off. So easier option to start with and then that's more challenging because it requires greater hand coordination, strength, fine motor skills. And same with this activity, I deliberately used non-toxic paint because as you can see here, she stamped her hands. So there's a lot of learning skills that are happening here. There's color recognition as she's stamping, she's saying the colors, as well as fine motor skills, using these plastic eggs, um, as well as crossing the midline. So whenever she crosses the midline, so if you've got your right hand, you go across like that, you're using both sides of your brain. So that's another added bonus. And also the hand-eye coordination, dipping in the paint, dipping on the paper. And then if they're going on, they're doing more patterns as well. It's a great activity for concentration. Um, as with all my activities, I do supervise my daughter, but I'm not an active participant in all of them. Once she knows what to do, I've demonstrated, I just let her go. Green. Blue. It, have a go. The bonus about this is it's quick to set up. Like I said, it held her attention. So working on her concentration for a long time. Then once it was done, I hung that on the clothesline as well to let it dry. And then we cleaned up together. The next one I must admit that we did is my favorite and it's doing squeegee eggs. So what I did is I just went on Google, printed off some egg shapes and I printed off about five of them. So they were all identical. So what we did is we got to grab a squeegee and put blobs of paint and then together we pulled the squeegee down so it made a marbling effect on the eggs, which I think turned out so well. It's just beautiful. As you can see here, just so we were applying the same amount of pressure so she knew that you have to, you have to push down or otherwise it won't have full contact with the paper underneath with the squeegee. So we did it together that first time and then everyone got involved. Her dad got involved as well doing some. Once we'd used up all the eggs, she still wanted to keep going. So what I did was just did some on some blank pieces of paper and then I had a rabbit um, stencil here and I just drew around it and then cut that out. And then I decided to put them up in our bathroom as a bit of wall decor. She just kept doing this activity. Um, she loves squirting the paint, which one of my parenting philosophies is, if she can do it and it's safe, then I'll let her do it. So I let her squeeze a lot of the paint as well. Yeah, you get more, but that's just part of learning and it was a lot of fun. And it's working on her grip strength as well. I know I keep talking about grip strength, so let me just explain why it's so important. In the future, when she goes to school, she's gonna be doing a lot of writing, she's gonna be holding onto pens, and so you need to have strong hands. But at the same time, for riding a bike, you need to be able to hold onto the handlebars. For being on a scooter, there's so many activities of daily living that we use our hands that we need strong hands to be able to do. So that's why these activities, you know, it's a bonus if she's working her grip strength. It's a fluffy bunny. It is a fluffy bunny, isn't it? There's more in there. The next two I want to share what I've done this year. So the first one is just a simple tracing activity. I got this foam bunny from a craft store and I first drew around it and then I showed her and then she did some. This was really good. So it's not about the end product. I find with toddlers and preschoolers, it's about the process. So her trying to go around the bunny. Yes, it didn't exactly look like a bunny at the end, but that doesn't matter. She was crossing the midline. She was using both hands in coordination um, and she enjoyed it. And then after we'd done that, I had some cotton wool balls and some glue. Once again, another great skill that they'll be using. And she glued them down and stuck the cotton balls. So there's some more activities. As you can see, it doesn't have to be too difficult. Like I could have used a squirty glue and then she would have had the grip strength ability as well. So anyway, I hope these help you. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Say g'day, I love to say hi and check us out on Instagram if, if you want more weekday inspiration. Oh, and before I go, if you haven't seen this plastic Easter egg video, do go check that out. You'll love it. Bye.